aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four year degree? We've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, programmable logic control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side. We talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. We talk a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting. And right now, we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground, and you can see a plant grow, and you can see something to harvest from it. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better 
to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating in there, for the simple reason I I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job, and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now with Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit.
back as we get ready to start the third quarter here from Jim Randall Stadium in Moorhead 10 to 7 Colin leading as Klein kicks away from the 40 and it's going to be taken by Luckett at the 10 yard line looks for return room straight ahead 30 35 out near the 40 and finally taken off his feet there by Anthony Brown that's where the Wolves will start first and 10 as they lead MDCC 10 to 7 here just underway in the second half from Moorhead Bulls will have it first and 10 at their own 42. Quarterback Devon Tott with play action, swings it left side, caught at the line of scrimmage and wrestling for positive yardage across the 45 up to the 46. James Singleton, I believe, on the reception. Understand. Bring up second and six. Hot bunches receivers close to either side of the line. Now fires a missile over the middle, and that's caught for a first down by Singleton as he spins his way to the Trojan 45. And the Wolves quick to the line on first and 10. Tot looking to pass again and a diving catch near the Wolves sideline. Short gain on the play. That's Tyquan Henderson on the grab. Gain is to the 41. Four yard pickup will bring up second and six. Wolves on top, 10-7 here early in the third quarter. And we've got movement up front. Trojan defensive tackle jumped, but was he pulled? We'll see. Will go against the Trojans. That'll Move the ball to the 36. We'll leave the Wolves with second and one. Yeah, but some people have to stand right here in the speeders. Now some people get sitting there. Second and short. Tot will check to the sideline. He's got Bobby Shanklin in the backfield. Shifts to Tot's left. Play action. Fires over the middle. Intercepted. That ball picked near the 25-yard line and return room up the Wolves sideline. It went through the hand of intended receiver. And Jordan Johnson comes up with his second pick of the night. So Jordan Johnson hauls that one in, went through the hand it looked like of intended receiver. Johnson with his second pick. Now can Parton and company take advantage offensively. Trojans take over first and 10 at their own 41. Quarterback Caleb Parton will have Devon Liddell in the backfield. Parton to throw that pass caught at midfield. And streaking down the Trojan sideline, Raheem fairly chased down from behind, taken out of bounds by Andrew Johnson. Well, that ball was nearly picked. Defensive back jumped the route, but he couldn't get a paw on it fairly with great concentration, hauled it in and sets the Trojans up first and 10 from the Wolf 28. Thirty-one yards on the completion. Give to Liddell straight ahead. Fights for a couple. Taken down by Jalen Sims at the 26. Bring up second and eight. We'll 
Well, both these teams can say they've had multiple opportunities and, and gifts from the other team here throughout. Who's going to be able to take advantage here in the second half and pull away? Parton in trouble, lost downfield, incomplete. Well, he was under heavy pressure by Sims and had to get it away. His closest receiver was Liddell. Incomplete pass will bring up third and eight for the Trojans. 11.48 to go in the third quarter. We've got a good one here in Moorhead. 10 to seven, Cole in with a three point lead. It's a little, I don't think I'd be able to use an evaluation. Two receivers right, one to the left, and H back to the left side of the formation for the Trojans on third and long. Parton rolls left, now gonna have to tuck it and run. He's hammered from behind, out of bounds. Well shy of the first down. That body's going to the ground after the play, but no flags. Trojans will be short of the first down. To mark him out, it appears the 25. For just a one yard gain. We're going to see Davin Klein come on his first field goal attempt of the season. This will be a 42-yard attempt from the left hash. Go. Snap is back. Hold is down. Kick is up. It's got plenty of distance, and Klein so missed it wide left. Appeared initially from my vantage point. It might have gone through, but they say no good. So the 42-yard attempt, unsuccessful score remains 10 to seven. Cole in with the lead. Eleven oh seven to go here in the third quarter from Moorhead. Great crowd here on hand at Jim Randall Stadium. A yeah. good crowd across the way. Folks made the trip from Wesson as well. Tot on first down, hands off. That's Daniels. Straight ahead, breaks a tackle, gets into Trojan territory and almost broke free again. Marlon Brown had him around the 45-50 and Daniels able to skirt loose, get into Trojan territory all the way down to the 42. Wolves want to work quickly. Tot with time in the pocket going downfield. Has a man open but overshoots. Taekwon Henderson. Well, it's been a couple of times tonight that Wolf receivers have gotten behind that Trojan secondary and Tot just not able to connect with them. He's overthrown several open receivers. He would love to have that one back. It'll bring up second and 10 now from the 42. Trips far side for Tot. He'll shovel it left side to Daniels. Fighting for extra yardage over on the Wolf sideline. He'll be taken out around the 35. Bring up third and short. And we've got a whistle and an official's timeout. Ball is spotted at the 35. It'll be third and three for the Wolves. And there is a Trojan down on the far sideline. The stop in play. And he's able to get up and walk off that is Jordan Johnson hopefully just a cramp and he'll be able to return he's got two picks on the night Trojans need him in the secondary Jordan Johnson Jacoby and Eichelberger have had huge nights defensively for the Trojans third and three from the Trojan 35 tight 
looking to throw over the middle. That pass is caught in traffic. First down pickup. Jalen Smith with an arm all over and balled it in. First down, Wolves to the 27. Ten to seven, three-point lead for Cole in here with 9.37 to go, third quarter. Play action for Tot, rolling right. Looking downfield, and lost it's gonna be incomplete. Taquan Henderson, the intended receiver, in the midst of the Trojan sideline, couldn't haul it in. Second and ten coming up. clock is down to seven. Wolves are going to have to make a decision here. It looks like they're going to have to burn a timeout. Play clock was slipping away from Tot and company. And the Wolves will burn their first timeout of the second half. We'll take a break as well and be back in a moment on the NBCC Sports Network. You got it. They've put some time back on the clock, 9.05 now to go in the third quarter. Coming out of the timeout, second and 10, Cole in from the MDCC 27. Wolves with a three-point lead, 10 to 7. Two receivers to either side for Devon Tott. Under pressure, they've got the screen set up, complete to Daniels, and he's got blockers down the Wolf sideline to the 10, to the 5, stretches for the pylon, and he's in there. Touchdown, Cole in. Boy, Johnny Daniels does the tough work there for Cole in, takes it in from 27 yards out, and the Wolves extend the lead 16-7 to with 8.56 to go in the third. Case will come on for the extra point. And Corey Case puts it up and through 17 to seven. Now the Wolves with a 10 point lead over MDCC with 8.56 to play in the third quarter. We'll take a break and be back in a moment on the MDCC Sports Network. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Welcome back, Watson Cook with you here in Moorhead. Jim Randall Stadium on the campus of Mississippi Delta Community College. Cole Lynn extends the lead to 10 with 8.56 to play in the third quarter. They now lead the Trojans 17 to seven. Tight to Daniels from 27 yards out on the screen pass. And now the kick taken at the 10 yard line and looking for return room straight ahead and working to about the 25 yard line is Ladarius Davenport, that's where the Trojans will set up shop. See if 
Martin and company can get something going and get back on the board. Trojans have been shut out since their opening drive. Missed a 42-yard field goal attempt on the previous possession. See what the Trojans can do here. First and 10 from their own 25. And off to Liddell, and he's wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. Not much happening there. Wolves say the ball came out. Still no call from the officials. And they're going to say Cole in football. So the ball stripped from. Devon Liddell and the Wolves will take over. First and 10 at the Delta 25. <laughs> Trojan defense needs a turnover of their own. They've had two picks already tonight. Stop here, first and 10. Handoff straight ahead. Kiwan Herndon on the carry. He works down inside the 15 to the 14, 11 yard gain. I'll move the sticks for Cole in. Trips to the left for tight on first and 10 from the Delta 14 as we approach the eight minute mark here in the third quarter. 10 point lead for Colin. Hand off Herndon coming near side. Gets to the 10 before he's wrestled out of bounds. Eichelberger on the tackle. Second and six, second and five, we'll call it. They put it down at the nine. Trojans will be back at home next week, next Thursday night. Cahoma Community College comes to town, 6.30 kickoff. Hope you can join us next week. If not, we'll have it for you right here on the NBCC Sports Network. Toss left side, Herndon looking for the pylon, makes a cut to the inside, and he's in there for the touchdown. Kiwan Herndon, a nine-yard touchdown run. The Wolves extend the lead 23-7, to now with 7.09 to go in the third. That's what I thought he was asking in there. He's live. Corey Case on for the extra point. Case out of Brookhaven, Mississippi, Brookhaven Academy. And this one sails wide right, no good. So the score remains 23 to seven. Colin on top of Mississippi Delta with 7.09 to play in the third quarter. We'll take a break and be back on the MDCC Sports Network. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. Extends the lead now 23 to 7 over Delta with 7.09 to go in the third quarter. Kickoff from Case goes out of bounds. 
Trojans will have it first and 10. Good field position. They'll put it at the Delta 35. We'll see if Caleb Parton and company can get things going offensively. They've struggled somewhat the last few possessions. A turnover on the previous drive. They can put some positive plays together here and get back in this one. Still plenty of time. 7.09 to go in the third. 23 to 7. Wolves on top here in Moorhead. Parton will work out of the gun. Hands off straight ahead. Short gain. Ball came loose again. They're going to say he's down this time. Colian sideline pleading their case, but official on the far side came in immediately, said he was down. Gain of maybe only half yard on the play. Trips come near side, Parton looking to pass. Lost downfield, caught the Trojan 45-yard line. Trotter on the reception and should be good enough for a Trojan first down. And they do now move the chains. First and 10 Trojans from their own 45. Trip receivers near side, nothing doing on the handoff. Carlos Carter on the carry. And he's going to lose a yard. We'll bring up second and 11 from the 44. Trips wide side this time for Parton, looking to pass, goes over the middle. There was contact, but no flag. Fairly was the intended receiver. And Navari and Benson get tangled up after the play, but cooler heads prevail. Third and 11 coming up for the Trojans. Five and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Trojans trailing 23 to seven. Little bubble screen caught by Fairley, but popped loose on the ground, and the Wolves have recovered. More turnovers just plaguing the Trojans here in the third quarter. Raheem Fairley would love to have that one back. Wolves will take over first and 10 at the Trojan 47. Caught the bubble screen, was popped pretty hard. Ball came loose and second fumble in as many possessions for the Trojans. Wolves get it back with first and 10 from the Delta 47. Todd in trouble, looking to throw downfield and having to come back to catch it at the 40 yard line was Jalen Smith. And they say incomplete. to come down with it out of bounds. They say incomplete. We'll bring up second and 10. Tight with three receivers bunched in. Tight left side of the formation as a single receiver split out wide to the left. He'll turn, toss it to Luckett, in trouble in the backfield and dropped back at midfield. Antonio Luckett had nowhere to go. Braxton Cunningham giving pursuit. Lost back to midfield, third and 13.
Still plenty of time left in this one, but the Trojans need a stop, need something positive to happen. The turnover bug has bitten them here in the third quarter. Giving up a couple of touchdowns. As Tot goes over the middle, and that pass is deflected. Another beautiful breakup by Eichelberger. That is the third, I believe, pass breakup by Jacoby and Eichelberger tonight. And that will force a punt out of the Wolves. Dylan Watson will go back and stand at his own 35 to kick it away. Trojans don't bring any pressure. High kick going to be taken around the 14 as Davenport dancing around works across the 20 up to around the 22, maybe the 23 before he's taken off his feet. And that's where the Trojans will have it first and 10. You just feel like if the Trojans can string a couple of first downs together, maybe catapult this offense back, get their confidence back going. They've been able to move the ball down the field pretty much all night, but they struggled somewhat the last couple of drives. First and 10 from the 24. 424 to play here in the third. Cole in on top, 23 to 7. Martin will have Carter in the backfield, play action, looking to throw, going deep downfield, looking for Fairley, and a flag is down. We're going to have pass interference against the Wolves. Boy, that one underthrown just a bit, or Fairley might have had six there, but we're going to have pass interference against the Wolves, and maybe that's the break the Trojans need. will take MDCC into Wolf territory. I'm going to beg your pardon. They're going to put it up at the 39. I apologize. I was wondering why they were going so far downfield. A 15-yard penalty. So we'll put it at the Delta 39. Parton with Carter in the backfield. He'll hand off to Carter. There is a flag in the backfield. It's in the area of holding. There's a loss of five on the play. We'll check the penalty marker. Will be holding against the Trojans. Colian going to decline the penalty and take the down. It'll be second and 15 after the loss of five back to the 34. Parton checking to the sideline to get the play. Getting a good look there at the sophomore quarterback out of Brandon, Mississippi. Looking to throw second and long over the middle. Caught near the 45-yard line. That's Ladarius Moore. Makes it now a very manageable third down. We'll have it at the 44, gain of 10 on the play. Bring up third and five. One loss. Yeah, I had to catch him. There you go. Trojans need a conversion here. Parton in trouble. Escapes to his right, pump fakes, gets a man off his feet, and he's going to scramble for the first down over on the Colin sideline. What a move by Parton. Deek, the Colin defender, and ends up scrambling for the first down. Let's see where they say he stepped out of bounds. He had plenty for the first down. Looks like they're going to put it at the Wolf 49. Shots, you know, 
Seven yard scramble for Caleb Parton gets the Trojans a fresh set of downs. On first and 10, swings it out left side, caught. Short gain as Carlos Carter was immediately taken off his feet by Navari and Benson. Gain is to the 45, pick up a four, will bring up second and six. Twenty-three to seven, Cole in on top. Here with two thirty to go, third quarter. Second and six. Parton hands off. That's Liddell back in in the game, and he goes nowhere. Stop for a loss. So they may give him progress to the line of scrimmage. Now official on the near side is going to say he lost two back to the forty-seven. down eight yards to go for the Trojans as we tick down near the end of the third quarter. Parton takes a snap, looking to pass, caught fairly on the screen and he is hammered at the 45 yard line. Wow. Dietrich Hicks just introduced himself to Raheem Fairley. And Fairley, thankfully, thankfully, able to get up, walk off under his own power. He was drilled. Gain is to the 45, fourth and six. Trojans have the offense on the field. Two receivers left, two to the right. Play clock is down to five. Parton may just let it run down and call a timeout here. And that's what they will do. Coach Johnson and the Trojans going to talk things over. Fourth down and six. Ball at the Wolf 45. Interesting decision here from Coach Johnson coming up. I don't know that you're in panic mode just yet. Uh, with 50 seconds left in the third quarter, still plenty of time. See what the first year head coach decides to do coming out of the timeout. Trojans trailing by 16, still just a two possession game. Is it 50 seconds to play here in the third. Oh, Trojans picked up a couple of first downs on this drive. It started back at the Delta 24. Eighth play of the drive coming up if the Trojans do decide to go for it. And they will send the offense on the field. Is Coach Johnson going to roll the dice? Fourth and six from the Wolf 45. They'll send trip receivers to the right. Single receiver to the near side is Moore. Parton looking to pass. Has the screen set up, but it's sniffed out. And Liddell is taken down immediately as... Davion Roby was having nothing of it. Turnover on downs. Wolves will get it back. Uh, just shy of midfield. You like the play call there coming out of the timeout, but just got to do a little bit better job blocking there as Roby came untouched to blow up the screen pass. Wolves take over at their own 47. Now, 34 seconds left to play in the third. Hand off near side, Shanklin. Works into Trojan territory. It's to the 45, eight yard pickup. We'll bring up second and two. That will likely be the final play of the third quarter. Clock ticking down to 10 seconds. And Tot 
going to trot over to the Wolves sideline. Cole Lim will take a 23-7 lead into the fourth quarter. We'll step aside and take a short break and be back on the NBCC Sports Network. Welcome back here on the NBCC Sports Network. Watson Cook with you tonight from Moorhead, Mississippi as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of play. The Colin Wolfpack leading the NBCC Trojans 23 to seven. And the Wolves have first and, or I beg your pardon, second and two from the Delta 45. Quarterback Devon Todd has gone the distance tonight for Colin. Puts it on the ground, ball is loose. And Tot able to fall on it. No, they say Trojan football. Trojan football as Joshua Everett comes out of there with it. The handoff was never cleanly exchanged between Tot and Shanklin. And the Trojans catch a break. They get it right back after the turnover on downs. They'll have it first and 10 from midfield. So still life for the Trojans here in the fourth. point deficit for MDCC. They've got 14.53 to work with. A golden opportunity here to climb back in it after the Wolf fumble. First and 10 from midfield. Parton looking to pass. Has time. Now steps up in the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run. Gets to the Wolf 45 to the 40 to the 39 and steps out of bounds there. 11 yard run for Parton. Parton, not the biggest guy listed at six foot 170, but he's not afraid to tuck it and run, put his head down when he needs to. They're going to say he stepped out back at the 43, so it'll be second and short. Handoff straight ahead, Liddell. He's popped hard just shy of the 40. He'll put it at the 41. Previous run by Parton, a seven-yard run. Now two there from Liddell. Third and one from the Wolf 41. Here early in the fourth. Cole in on top, 23-7. to seven. Parton takes a snap. Officials blow this one dead. And we're going to have a timeout, MDCC. Boy, you hate to have to use one here this early in the fourth when you're down two scores, but Coach Johnson saw something he didn't like. A pretty crucial third down coming up, so maybe not, maybe not the worst time to use that timeout. We'll see what he chooses to do here on third. It looks like less than a yard to go. Ball re uh, resting at the Colin 41. You get a good glimpse there. Coach Johnson in the huddle, pretty animated with his crew. He's telling his guys, hey, we got a bow up here and 
pick up a yard or two, keep this drive alive. And boy, again, just after uh, after seeing the way the Trojans struggled in week one on the road at Southwest, it just looks like a completely different ball team here tonight, and they've played well and got themselves a chance with 13.39 to go here at home. Need to convert on third down here. Coming out of the timeout, what does Coach Johnson want to do? Split a receiver out wide to either side, has an H back to the right side of the formation. Work side of the gun. Gonna fake the give, was gonna call his own number on the quarterback keeper, and he is sandwiched in the backfield. Xavion Shaw and Kadarius Miller just sandwiched Parton in the backfield. The loss back to the 45, a four yard loss. Now fourth and five. Looks like the Trojans are gonna go again. Play clock is down to 10. Trojans have trip receivers right side, fourth and five from the Wolf 45. Parton rolling right. Here comes pressure. He's in trouble, and he's going to be dropped back in MDCC territory as Jalen Sims was shot out of a cannon. Coming from the right side of that Wolf defense, Parton never had a chance. He was running for his life from the time it was snapped. Another turnover on downs, and the Wolves will take over first and 10. At the Delta 47. Well, defense going to be asked to come up with another big stop. to do it quickly. Trojans down two scores with 12.47 to go. 23-7. to seven. Wolves on top here in Moorhead. Home opener for MDCC. They'll be back home next week hosting Kahoma. And Luckett takes the handoff on first and 10 and gets three to the 44. We'll bring up second and seven as Marlon Brown comes over to make the stop. A sophomore out of Pickens, Mississippi, Yazoo County High School. Second and seven for the Wolves. Tot out of the gun, looking to throw. Has the screen set up, caught by Luckett. He weaves his way for a Wolf first down inside the 35 to the 33, maybe the 32. Eichelberger over to make the tackle. 12 yard pickup and a wolf first down. Plenty of time on the play clock. Tight, just seeing if he can draw the Trojans off sides. Still eight seconds to snap it. Tot swings it out on the left flat. It falls incomplete. Trojans were hoping that was a backward pass. It was intended for James Singleton. They do a little backwards pass and say, Colian recovered, I guess back at the 34. Five. No, they're going to put it. Going to put it back to the line of scrimmage. So incomplete. Second and ten from the 32. And off Luckett on second and ten. He has running room down the Wolf sideline, and he's going to take it the distance if he stays in bounds. Yes, he did. 32-yard touchdown run for Antonio Luckett. And Cole in, starting to pull away here in the fourth, 29-7. to seven.
First touchdown run of the night for Luckett. Case on for the extra point. And Corey Case puts it up and through. 30 to 7. Cole in on top here with 11.15 to go in the ballgame. We'll step aside and take a break and be back on the MDCC Sports Network. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a maybe possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Welcome back. Cole Inn extends the lead to 30 to 7. 11.15 to go in the ball game. A luck at 32 yard touchdown run. And now a nice return on the kickoff. Sir Trotter returns it out near the 40-yard line. In a decent field position for the Trojans. We'll see if they can move the sticks here on this drive and try to climb back in it a little bit. 23-point deficit now. Just over 11 minutes to go. Receivers left, two to the right for Parton on first and ten. Hand off to Liddell. Tries to cut to the inside and dropped after a one-yard gain. Tackled by Kadarius Miller. Bring up second and nine from the Trojan 41. Parton to pass, left flat, caught by Fairley. And works near the first down marker. They think they're going to say he stepped out just shy, and a late flag comes in. I'll mark it out at the 49, but we'll check the penalty marker. Going to have a sideline warning. was the call. I'm going to say he stepped out at the 49, so should be should be third and one. Down marker says second down. Miscommunication there as Parton throwing downfield receiver cut inside Parton through to the outside. That'll lead the Trojans with, should be fourth down if I'm not mistaken. Down marker says third, we'll go with third. Like third better. Hand off to Liddell and he scampers his way for a first down into Wolf territory. Popped hard and dropped at the Colian 40. That'll move the sticks, Trojans will have it. First and 10 at the Wolf. They'll put it at the 41. So Liddell showing some nice versatility on that last run, picking up the first down for the Trojans. First and 10 from the Wolf, 41. 
Parton to pass, left side, caught fairly. And he'll step out of bounds near the 35. Looks like it's going to mark him out shy of the 35, maybe the 36, 37. Five-yard gain, second and five. Another quick pass left side. Be short of the first down. There's Jaquel Allen on the reception. Bring up third and one. Ball is at the 32, 8.55 to play. Colin 30, Delta 7. Hand off Liddell straight ahead. He's got the first down. A tough run up the middle. Inside the 30. The 28, maybe the 27. Stopped by Ellis Fair. Give him four to the 28. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Parton on first and 10, looking to throw. Gonna loft one deep down the right side and it falls incomplete. Threw it just off the outside shoulder of Dontavious Triplett, the intended receiver. Bring up second and 10 from the 28. Second and 10, Parton looking to throw. Back shoulder catch on the far sideline. Are they going to give it to him? Yes, they are. What a grab on the far sideline, Raheem Fairley. Mark it out at the 14, a 14 yard gain. Trojans move the chains. A little something brewing here midway through the fourth. They can punch it in the end zone. Handoff, Liddell, and he is stuffed up the gut. Nothing happening there. Sims on the tackle. I'm going to lose a yard back to the, the uh, 15. I'll bring up second and 11. It's actually Miles Griffin on the previous carry, not Liddell. Liddell is now checked back into the game. Five wide for Parton, three receivers right, two to the left. He's in trouble in the backfield, puts it on the ground and able to fall on it. Boy, he was just scrambling, looking for help from anywhere. That's a huge loss. Bring up third and long for the Trojans. Put it down at the, here's maybe the 28. That's the case, the loss of 13. Third and 24. Got to get to the four to pick up a first down. Thank you. 30 to seven, Wolves on top here in Moorhead, 6.45 to go. Third and 24, Parton has to step up in the pocket and he's gonna be wrestled down, just could not escape the pressure from Justin Washington. Washington out of Allen High School, Covington, Louisiana, coming up with the stop there for the Wolves. Loss back to the 32, four yard loss. Now fourth and 28, Trojan's gonna take one last gasp at it. Trips right side for Parton, needs some protection up front. Has the screen play set up, but 
Carter had to go to the ground to haul it in. They'll call it a completion. Lost a yard or two and a turnover on downs. You can get six in the day. So the Wolves will take over first and 10 with 5.56 to play and a 23-point lead here in Moorhead. They'll have it at their own 34. will turn and shovel it to Kiwan Herndon. Looks for running room right side. He'll step out of bounds right at about the line of scrimmage, it appears. And no gain on the play will bring up second and 10. Clock continues to run under five and a half to go. Here in Moorhead. Play clock down to five. Tot from the gun going to take the snap. Hand off Herndon straight ahead. First down run for the Wolves as he works to the 48-yard line. Taken down there by Sedante Myers. I'll actually mark it at midfield, a 16-yard gain. A fresh set of downs for the Wolves. We've got a new quarterback in the game for Colin. Tyler Fortenberry, 6'5", 215, freshman out of Brookhaven, Mississippi, Brookhaven Academy. He'll hand off to Herndon, and he tries to spin out of contact near the 30 and able to fall to the 28 before he's taken off his feet. Myers again on the tackle, but another big burst straight ahead. Not a Kiwan Herndon, and Wolves kind of running at will here late in this one. 22-yard gain to the 28, first and 10, Cole in. clock down to four. Wolves don't have a play and they're going to have to burn a timeout. So that'll stop the clock with 3.39 to go here in this one. Cole Lynn has pulled away in the second half. They lead the Trojans 30 to 7. We'll take a break and be back on the NBCC Sports Network. back. Watson Cook with you here on the MDCC Sports Network. Jim Randall Stadium in Moorhead, Mississippi. It's been all Cole in here in the second half. They lead MDCC 30 to 7. Does not take away though from the improvement. I think anybody that, that saw the Trojans last week and then saw them here tonight, I don't think anybody would disagree at a vast improvement in this football team and you can tell good things are to come down the road for Coach Tavares Johnson and his crew. Things just kind of slipped away with some untimely turnovers here in the second half as handoff is to Herndon, and he stays on his feet, dancing along the sideline, taking down shy of the 10. Oh, a good second, third effort as Austin Mitchell finally brings him down. 
mark him at the 12, a 16-yard pickup, another first down pickup for Colin. Fortenberry will stay in at quarterback for the Wolves. Under three minutes to play. Hand off Herndon. Why not? He's had a pretty successful drive. He'll work inside the 10 down to the 8. Four-yard gain will bring up second and six. Again, we'll remind you the Trojans will be back here at Jim Randall Stadium next Thursday night, 6.30 kickoff as they welcome rival Cahoma Community College to town. And handoff Herndon, and he gets in the end zone with ease. Touchdown, Wolves. Kewine Herndon with his first touchdown, or excuse me, his second touchdown run of the night. This one from eight yards out. Makes it 36-7 with 2.04 to play. Six plays, 66 yards on the scoring drive for the Wolves. Case on for the extra point. Left footed kicker puts it up and in. 37 to 7 is your score. Uh, Colin leading MDCC with 2.04 to play. We'll take one more quick break and be back on the MDCC Sports Network. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great Welcome back to kickoff from Case. Picked up at the 16-yard line. Davenport returns it up the Trojan sideline. He's thrown out of bounds late, and a flag will come in. They will get Jemai and Spencer. With unnecessary roughness there. Trojans will have a chance to get a few more plays in here. 158 left. A valiant effort tonight from the Trojans, just all co-in here in the second half as they've pulled away now a 30-point lead, 37-7. to so the Personal foul will take the Trojans up to their own 48 is where they'll start this drive, likely the final drive of the night. Parton stays in at quarterback, looking to throw, fires over the middle, incomplete. He's looking for Fairley. It was thrown a little bit short, also Fairley might have heard footsteps. And now Parton going to have to go down. Looks like he's caught a cramp. Clock stopped with the incomplete pass. 151 to play. A 
mentioned the home game next week against Cahoma two weeks from tonight, October, or excuse me, September 22nd. Trojans will travel to Boonville, Mississippi to take on Northeast. And the Trojans will be back home September 29th. It'll be homecoming, a 2.30 Thursday afternoon kickoff here from Jim Randall for homecoming. That's September 29th. Then the Trojans will hit the road for consecutive weeks. They'll go to Northwest on October 16th. They'll travel to Holmes on October 13th. And the Trojans will close out the regular season with two home games, October 20th and 27th against Jones and East. Second and 10, new quarterback in the game, Donovan Cole for the Trojans. And is that not an incomplete pass? Ball was loose. Wolves have it. And they're going to give Cole in the football around the 36-yard line. And we saw Donovan Cole play the entire second half last week in the loss to Southwest. I'm getting a chance to see the replay here in the booth. I couldn't tell because he was in so much traffic if the arm was actually going forward or not. Regardless, it's going to be Coley in football with 137 left. They'll have it at the Trojan 36. Fortenberry takes a snap. He'll hand off to Luckett. Looks for running room near side. And Luckett going to be taken down by Vince Taylor. And a late flag comes in. Gain is to the... 30, a six-yard pickup, and now we'll sort out the penalty flag. Still waiting to get a call from the official. Gonna have a personal foul against Cole in. The late hit out of bounds goes against the Wolves. That'll back them up to the 45. First and 19. Low snap back to Fortenberry, able to pick it up, and he's going to scramble near side, and he will step out at the Delta 44. Gain of only one. We'll bring up second and 18. As we approach the one-minute mark here in this one, 37-7. to Colin going to improve to one and one on the year. Delta going to drop to 0-2. Much improved, much better showing tonight out of Mississippi Delta than uh, what the Trojans experienced a week ago at Southwest. Offside. We've got more flags, offsides against the Trojans. to the, or move it down, I should say, to the 38. I'll go home. In like three minutes, Second I'll and go about home. 12, and Luckett going to be taken down in the backfield, chased down by Joshua Everett. Bring up third and about 16, maybe 17, as we're under a minute to go now. Clock approaches 50 seconds. Barry going to let the play clock run down as far as he can. It's about a 
21 second differential, play clock and game clock. Third and long, handoff Luckett around the right side. Good burst of speed. He works down near the 30, close to a Wolf first down. Good news, he does not get out of bounds. Clock will continue to run, and that will do it. Your final here from Jim Randall Stadium. Cole Inn comes to Moorhead, knocks off the NBCC Trojans 37-7. to It is your final score. Again, the Trojans drop to 0-2 on the year. Cole Inn improves to 1-1. One one. MDCC will be back home next week. 6.30 kickoff to welcome the Cahoma uh, Community College Tigers to town. If you can't make it out uh, to the stadium here in Moorhead, we'll have it for you right here on the MDCC Sports Network. You got a lot of positives for Coach Johnson, uh, especially, again, after the showing last week, a lot of things that, that they can look to and build on and, and continue to get better, and they'll have another crack at it next week here at home. We appreciate you joining us tonight for NBCC Football. This has been Trojan Football on the NBCC Sports Network. Internship, so they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business so they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're gonna be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Win Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures, no problem. That's a lot of money.